We're near Hudson's Hope now, and there is a big wildfire raging, and the air is just smoke. It's pretty bad for breathing, which is kind of important. And I mean, it looked like end days. It looked like, yes. you know, the Terminator, Matrix type sky. It was just, you know, the sun was completely hidden behind it. And uh, yeah, everything was this bright orangish red. smell everything and you know we're on a little helmet so there's not like a roll your window stuff there's always some way for like this kind of smoky air to get in and sting your eyes a little bit. Most importantly, is the map straight. It upset me to my soul. <laughs> the last time the map was all crooked. But I tried to convince myself the, the Earth is on an, uh, axis. an axis. That's right. How so many the degrees? world is crooked. I don't know. Fun <laughs> facts. I'm going to guess 14 degrees. I'll guess 13. All right. <laughs> We're Marissa, ready. Tim. <laughs> Back in action. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Two Up and Overloaded. I'm Tim Notier and this is my wife. Marissa Notier. And we ride around the world on our KTM 1190. That's right, we ride two up obviously because we're two up and overloaded. And in this season we've been riding up to the very top of Alaska and now we are making our way back down through Canada to the United States. Yeah. In the last episode, we found a campground called Andy Bailey Lake. Very and beautiful. it was really beautiful. It was, it was like perfect. A sunset, it was like you know, like a spiral, two spiral galaxies combining. There were stuns in the sky that were meeting. I got the reflection off the lake and there was like this third sun in the reflection that just looked absolutely beautiful. It was like the binary star system from tattooing. I was gonna say that and I'm glad you <laughs> did. It's snack time. What do you got for snacks? It's peanuts. <laughs> and I have also Mr. Peanuts. Yep. Finally, we are camping again. We haven't camped in a very long time. I'm not sure exactly how long, but um, it's been quite a few days and I'm very happy to break out the tent again. And look at this spot. Look at this weather. The lake is just shimmering in the distance and the sun is setting. We have beautiful white aspen trees behind us and then these gorgeous spruce. It's so beautiful. I'm just really happy to be out in nature once again. So I'm at the water pump here because we need some water. It says that the water is non-potable and we have to boil for 15 minutes, but we have our water filter so I'm gonna use that. Here is our six liter MSR bag to fill up with water. And then this is our gravity filter. All throughout Africa, it has worked marvelously every single time. We love it. You just fill it up, you let it sit, and it does its magic pretty quickly too. Usually within five minutes, it has filled up two liters at a time. Hmm. I think I'm gonna need Tim's help. <laughs> we love it. If you're ever interested in any of the gear that you see in our videos, you can always check it out on our website. Marissa was really scared of bears. We had seen a bear earlier that day. I 
I really set a record for worrying about these things. I do not want to be eaten by bears to an extreme level, though. <laughs> Neither. I mean, I think we all have that. <laughs> if there's anything on both sides of the lens here, none of us <laughs> want to would, be eaten would by bears. prefer to be eaten by bears. All right, so the sun has set. The temperature is dropping really quickly, and we are putting everything away kind of sort of in a tree as best as we could um, to get it away from bears. Obviously we saw a bear today, so it's important. So yeah, Marissa didn't get a whole lot of sleep that night. I slept like, like a little baby chipmunk. Part of the problem was that uh, I had put our new soap into a pannier with all of our clothes and pretty much everything that we wear and had inside the tent and it all smelled really fresh with this great soapy smell. And of course, that's definitely not what you want. But the counterbalance is me who smells like rotten flesh. <laughs> rotten <laughs> not, flesh? Not bathing for days. You're very lucky <laughs> there's no smell of vision involved here. But in the middle of the night, like there's this little like it sounded like you're on a submarine and there's like these depth charges like the like oh yeah a submarine <laughs> like uh Bloop. Bloop. almost like dripping water like a, a sonar a on a, a submarine yes. <laughs> I was like, wow, that is a really, really big drop of water. <laughs> it was awesome. It was a bird. Yeah, of course. Isn't that crazy? Not a submarine. But you know, all these little sounds, I'm just staying up all night thinking about it. Thankfully, we did not get eaten by bears in the night. I don't think a bear visited us in the no. campground, so that Actually, was I good. I remember I heard something not too far away. Really? Yeah, but when we woke up... Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was something. You know, but a chipmunk sounds like a polar bear when you're already <laughs> freaked out, you know? So, yeah. like... That's true. There yeah. was something wrestling in the there bushes. There was. But we woke up safe and sound. I love lakes in the morning because it's all just that misty, you know, Stephen King type setting of like so some murder had just taken place. <laughs> but beautiful. I'm trying to describe beautiful. It was like, you know, just you know, a gorgeous opening to a uh, 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 Nat Geo channel. There you go. Not a Stephen there King novel. Yeah. Very good. Good morning, everyone. We just woke up to the lovely views of the lake. I went down there this morning when the sun was rising and it was all misty and pink and purple and so beautiful. There's so many strange birds around here that make uh, great noises. <laughs> I just love listening to them. But we're gonna get packed up today and head on south. And our day's ride was going to take us further south, closer to Jasper National Park. So we packed up and we headed off from the campground. a beautiful day.
We stopped for breakfast at this wonderful place called Bucking Horse River Lodge. We got great hearty breakfast food. And the people next to us and the table next to us were talking about some explosion that had happened. So we just had a breakfast slash lunch over at this wonderful restaurant. And we met a couple from Fort Nelson, which is the town that we just came from yesterday. So they're also going south and they have confirmed a report to us about an exploding truck, um, an exploding tanker that took out part of the road. Um, they have not been able to get supplies for quite a while in Fort Nelson. And we learned that there had been a truck that had exploded along the highway just a little bit further down. And it had exploded on a bridge, which is pretty bad because it compromised the integrity of the bridge's structure. So they had blocked off the entire highway. And unfortunately in the town that these people were from, they hadn't been able to get supplies. And a construction worker that we passed earlier today said that the wait would probably be an hour to an hour and a half, um, depending on when we get there. Who knows, we could be lucky and not have any weight whatsoever, but... What pump is this? Pump three. Where do you see that? It says gasoline pump three. Yeah. So, um, we are expecting to hit a bunch of construction due to this exploding tanker. And everyone's been talking about it like, oh, well, you know, because of the exploding tanker, <laughs> we've just been totally out of the loop and hadn't heard anything, so... We have that to uh, look forward to today. We filled up with gas and headed back on the road. We got to where this bridge was and it was stop traffic. Thankfully, we didn't have to wait very long to get through the bridge. Yeah. Um, it was only like 10 or 15 minutes, so that was really good. It was pretty freaky seeing the spot where the truck had exploded. You could see it was all black and charred. As we kept riding and riding further south, I started to realize that it wasn't just clouds in the sky, it was this haze. Yeah. And it started to smell like smoke. And we, as we got closer and closer to where this wildfire was taking place, I realized that the clouds above us were getting darker and no. darker and thicker and thicker. We're near Hudson's Hope now and there is a big wildfire raging and the air is just smoke. It's pretty bad for breathing, which is kind of important. Don't get my bald spot. Don't. <laughs> And then as the sun was setting, or sun got to that certain angle, it wasn't even setting, you know, but like it was completely blocked out by the clouds and uh, the, yeah. the smoke. And I mean, it looked like end days. It looked like, yes. you know, the Terminator, Matrix type sky. It was just, you know, the sun was completely hidden behind it. And uh, yeah, everything was this bright orangish red. smell everything you know we're on little helmets so there's not like a roll your windows up there's always some way for like this kind of smoky air to get in and sting your eyes a little bit mm -hmm.
kind of giving me a headache. It was making my eyes water a little bit. You know, it was quite apparent what was happening. Yeah. And, you know, people told us that, yeah, there's a really big, large, wildfire. You have to just stay to the highway. There's just this one road that goes through this whole area of Canada. And so we just kept hoping that we wouldn't come across this fire and you just have to keep heading on down yeah. the road. Finally, we passed through this edge of the smoke cloud. You can see where it just kind of ends and there's blue sky on the other yeah. side of it, which was just remarkable. It was like this complete cliff of the clouds. And then on the other side, it was perfectly sunny and fine, not a cloud in the sky. And it was like the, the sky was divided in half, yes. you know, but like heaven was down here and hell was on top, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, it was really cool. And we crossed past the edge of the cloud yeah. and then we were back again in perfectly sunny yeah. weather. We'd never been through anything like that. We'd been through lots of fiery situations but nothing with a cloud of smoke that was that intense. Yeah. And so we pulled into Dawson's Creek. Dawson Creek. <laughs> We'd already been to Dawson City. We did. That's uh, farther north in Canada. This but is this true. one is Dawson Creek, like yes. the show. Like the bad <laughs> 90s show. <laughs> we have an awesome hotel room tonight. But look at the bike. It is covered in bugs. Yeah, we got a really, really nice hotel room. Mm-hmm, and I think we really needed it, especially after not sleeping so well the night before. Yeah. I love camping, and I love camping in nature in these quiet spots, but ever since we'd started going through northern USA into Canada, into Alaska, you know, we'd been in bear territory this yeah. whole time. Bear territory. Bear territory, that's yeah. right. And uh, sometimes it would keep me up at night and sometimes those nights of camping were full of worry. And so I wasn't getting my best sleep camping at night and I really appreciated this hotel. <laughs> Thanks to Temple of Moto. Yes, thank you Temple of Moto. Good morning everyone. Welcome to Dawson Creek, Alaska. Nope. <laughs> Welcome to Dawson Creek, Canada. And today we are super excited to be heading to Jasper National Park. Um, we should be able to get there in one day. It's what, like four and a half hours, yeah, I think, from camp, here? It's like nine hours and we're not going to all that far, so. No, but we will be, blah, but we will be going to Banff after Jasper. So hopefully tonight we'll find an awesome campground. The weather is supposed to be good, so very excited about that. We have to thank Temple of Moto for this wonderful, wonderful hotel room. This is called DC Motel, and it has been one of the best hotels that we've stayed in on our entire trip so far. So um, it was a lovely night's rest, and we are ready for all the camping that is to come and all the wilderness and all the wildlife, hopefully, that we'll see out there too. So when we woke up in the morning, we got back on the motorcycle and we were headed uh, further southeast. We saw that there's a sign that a lot of people go to and I didn't know quite where it was, but it was the beginning yeah. slash in our case, the end of the Alcon. So we are actually not entering, but leaving the world famous Alaskan highway. That's right. We'd taken the Cassier up yep. and now we are taking the Alcan or the Alaska Canadian highway back down. And yeah. so this was our first time coming to the beginning of the Alcan, this but for true. us it was the end of it. And I guess there's a big uh, beaver attraction. <laughs> but it said the world's biggest beaver. beaver. <laughs> and I was like, well that's 
sounds actually ridiculous, but... Something we have to see, of yeah. course. That was the large beaver attraction here in Beaverton. It was, uh... It was big. It was a big, big brown beaver. little pond. So we have a bunch of awesome snacks. Cashews. Cashews. Pistachios. Pretzels. <laughs> Sugar-free cookies. <laughs> Sunflower seeds. Yep. And listen to this folks, this is the finer things in life. That little psh was Agulton gas. Oh, Moita bubbly water. Our favorite. <laughs> On the way to Jasper, we stopped at a gas station and met up with a bunch of other motorcyclists. And they had some interesting news for us. Another reason to leave your visors down, folks. Yeah. <laughs> There's some crazy mustard just yeah. flying around yeah. the road. <laughs> so we just ran into some fellow motorcyclists. We are, where are we? We are somewhere in Alberta um, at the gas station, at the DQ. <laughs> they told us that by Jasper there's a really big Grand fire Cache. raging. Cache. We're at, oh yeah, we're at Grand Cash. And uh, they said that the power is out in Jasper, that uh, like a lot of services have been cut just because of this wildfire has been really, really devastating. They actually booked some stuff and it got canceled because in Jasper itself, there's no electricity. It's somewhere some power lines going in or out got burned up. And That's so, right. Jasper is both a national park and a town. Yeah. So they had booked a stay in the town of Jasper, but it had completely been canceled because the entire town was under an emergency because of these wildfires. Yeah. And so us never having booked anything, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we just kind of had to alternate, like, okay, well, we're not, we won't stay in Jasper, but hopefully somewhere around before we get into deep and penetrate into this, you know, territory where the fires are, we'll find somewhere to camp. As we got closer and closer to Jasper, the skies started turning that hazy shade again and the sun started getting really yellow and I realized we are definitely getting closer to another wildfire. Yeah. We knew we weren't going to be able to get to the town of Jasper itself. The closest next town to it was the town of Hinton. wanted to stay at a hotel because we had just stayed at a hotel and yeah whatever it was my, so nice. my adventure <laughs> spirit is still there but you know I just I wanted to get a good night's sleep not have to set up or break down camp also uh, it was very important that we had good air quality to sleep in yeah because camping outside I mean it just seemed like it was so smoky out I didn't know if it was going to be safe for us to be outside but we kept pulling into all these <laughs> hotels and they're like, 150 bucks. I was like, there's no, there's no way. No mm -hmm. way in heck. And then we just pull into like a small little dinky kind of motel looking thing that I was like, I don't want to stay here, but if the price was right, I guess. And you know, they'd be like, 130. And it's like, whoa. Yeah, it was just seeming a bit out of our price range yeah. for what we were getting. And so. There was an RV park. Yeah. <laughs> We've got some nice shade from the trees. 
And best of all, we have wonderful, wonderful weather. It was so nice. It was nice. And we concluded that what did the, we air, <laughs> the air quality was sufficient enough yeah. for us to camp that night, besides the smoky haze. Yeah. Um, everything was turning out all right. We were concerned about um, our ride through Jasper the next day. We didn't know if it was going to be open. Yeah. We didn't know if um, we'd ever be able to get through Jasper. We didn't know how much damage that fire was going to do to all the infrastructure within the National Park, but we were definitely going to give it a shot because Jasper National Park was one of the top rated items on our list yeah. to go see in Canada. So we really, really wanted to go, but we're nervous about what was going to happen. But that will all be in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching this one. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up. Ding ding. Or a thumb and a half. <laughs> and hit the subscribe button below. Ding ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Thanks everybody. Bye. Stay safe. And we headed further towards, what was that place called? It wasn't Hawkins. It was Hinton. Hinton. You should have given me a hint. Uh. <laughs> and so we headed towards... Jasper. Jasper. <laughs> Hinton. Hinton. Well, and uh, yeah, we headed towards Hinton. Yeah. Well, we headed towards Jasper. Sh